So right now is our prime time. This is, you think about having a second or third win. This is, this is our time. If, if it encompasses anything with acting or voice or performing, right now is our time to shine. Microphones have gotten extremely, extremely affordable. So have interfaces for the amount of, what you can get nowadays for $400 is insane. And the level of quality that you can get is nuts. I'm not saying that your studio should stop there, but what I'm saying to get into the game, or you would be surprised what $250 can do for you with an interface or a, um, an actual microphone. And uh, been doing a little bit of everything. Lots of looping and ADR. Uh, movies are ramping up. Television shows, there is no more hiatus. Welcome, welcome. Great to see everybody. Kitty Kaboom is in the house. And Grace, hello. All right, look at all the oh, regular faces and the new faces. Excellent. So good to see you all. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Tish Hicks. I am the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo coming to you from Wadsworth, Illinois today. Uh, usually we're based in Burbank, California, and we work with people all over the world. Uh, this is our monthly free Q&A call called Ask the Sensei. You know, it's the dojo. Um, and we are super excited to kind of go back to roots to one of our uh, first senseis, uh, Jason Lanier White, my friend and colleague is here joining us. Um, he, when we first started doing Ask the Sensei, he was on the Sensei, uh, Ask the Sensei calls. Um, usually Dan Leonard joins us as our uh, home studio master. It is Yom Kippur. So he is not going to be here today, but between Jason and Jeffrey and I, we should be able to answer all your tech questions or we will connect you with Dan if you have something even more um, um, <clears throat> uh, going on. I want to introduce Jeffrey Gilbank, who is our Dojo team member. He is here facilitating for us. If you need anything, if you need anything in the background, Jeffrey can, uh, can uh, help you out with that. So um, how this rolls is, I just introduced me a little bit about, a little bit about the dojo um, and we'll have Jason introduce himself in a second and share a little bit of what, what he's up to. And then we are here to answer your questions. So if you have questions, you can put them in the chat and we will answer as many questions as we can in the hour that we have. And uh, you put them in the chat and then Jeffrey will uh, ask you, you know, calling you to, to uh, bring your voice into the room and ask them. So, and this is, um, you know, we, we uh, introduced uh, Jason as one of his many, 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 many uh, amazing things that he is so skilled at um, is ADR and looping. And we are open to ask, uh, answering any of your questions about anything that's on your mind about where you're at in your voiceover career and uh, you know anything that is keeping you from where you want to be because that's that's what it's about so um well without further ado let us introduce the amazing Jason Lanier White my friend my colleague one of the best people on the planet um as a human as a voiceover artist Jason, so glad you could be here. How's it going, everyone? Hello. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, excellent. A lot of so us. Jason, yeah, a lot of us. Quite a lot, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell us what you, what goodness you've been up to recently, my dear. A little bit of everything. Um, when the pandemic hit, as you know, for voiceover artists, that was kind of our golden time. So people could only really ingest as much media as they could. So studios ramped up with production of animation, video games, audiobooks, everything else that I may not be thinking of. I see Angelita, what's going on? Her and I have worked together before. She's <laughs> awesome. Um, so right now is our prime time. This is, you think about having a second or third win. This is, this is our time. If, if it encompasses anything with acting or voice or performing, Right now is our time to shine. Microphones have gotten extremely, extremely affordable. 
so have interfaces for the amount of what you could get nowadays for $400 is insane. And the level of quality that you can get is nuts. I'm not saying that your studio should stop there, but what I'm saying to get into the game or you would be surprised what $250 can do for you with an interface or a, um, an actual microphone. And uh been doing a little bit of everything. Lots of looping and ADR. Uh, movies are ramping up. Television shows, there is no more hiatus. They are shooting mm -hmm. all the time. Uh, they'll shoot in February for a show and be done and wrapped by April for season one. And then they pick back up in July for season two. And they'll just start shooting. And before December, they're done with season two. So sometimes I'll work on projects where... Hey, we're working on episode three of season three now. And I'm thinking we just worked on season two at the beginning of the year, but it's just rapid fire. People want to ingest. There's so much media, so much content, which means for us as performers and as people being adjacent to that industry, it's nothing but opportunity, mm -hmm. nothing but opportunity. I tell everyone, try to stay ready, stay up on everything you can. Make sure you read aloud every single day. So when they hand you something you've never seen, it's effortless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just came back um, from the Catalyst Festival. We were just talking about it. Um, the dojo has been invited to be uh, a, a sponsor, an anchor, um, a liaison for the voiceover world for the Catalyst Festival, which is um, basically Sundance of independent Sundance of independent content, uh, episodic content creation. Mm -hmm. So we went there, we went there and maybe there's, maybe there's even some people from Catalyst here. Hopefully there is. Um, we went there to uh, let people who are performers that were there, people who are creators that are there, remind them how voiceover can be a part of their creative revenue building stream, revenue stream. Um, also to recognize as, as content creators, there are so many ways, ADR looping being one of the many ways that voiceover is a part of, of any content creation. You're, it, it's part of the production we cross, cross um, in so many ways. And then also for us as voiceover artists to open our minds and hearts about how we can become content creators. It's sort of a next frontier. I, I think um, on-camera actors have been like, I'm making my own thing, I'm shooting this, but it's not necessarily something that's been in the forefront of how we approach mm -hmm. uh, the voiceover actors. So that's, that's super cool. Um, yeah. Well, what do you think, Jason? Shall we start taking some questions? Sure. Uh, I want to let everyone know. So I tend to answer questions pretty rapid fire. Um, if it seems like it is a very simplistic question, please do not take offense. I may say that may be a question we could all Google on. And so if one of the, just a prelim, prelim, preliminary question may be, hey, how do I get started in voiceover? That would be something that Tish could answer for you later on, or you may be be able to even google so we have more time to ans answer the more in-depth question so don't take offense if i say that to your question and say uh, you know quick google search first page should be able to rip through that yeah and awesome i'm ready awesome. Let's get all right started. I'm Let's get, uh, yeah uh so what questions do we have and if, do we uh, hopefully we have questions because this is the <laughs> and a it's kind of a main point here um yeah D do we have any questions so far uh jeffrey i i think so far uh folks are still formulating their questions okay. um he's so diplomatic I, <laughs> let's go through the difference between adr and looping so perfect adr stands for a ton of different it's an acronym that's done uh, that has many different explanations but i like to use the Audio dialogue replacement. The mm -hmm. word replacement helps me remember, ah, something needs to be taken out. Something needs to be put in. Uh, so they shoot a movie and let's say Bette Midler is talking. And for whatever reason, someone dropped a cup or they didn't notice this until later on. And they need to take half of her sentence out and find someone who can voice match Bette Midler and then put have that person, that performer record the same line and then extrapolate those together. 
uh, the best analogy for this comparison would be in the Spider-Verse. Shameek Moore is the main character of Miles Morales in that movie. Sometimes you hear Shameek Moore. Sometimes you hear me. I'm his voice <laughs> match in that film. They, the way Sony blends everything, you could listen with high dynamic headphones and you would never be able to tell where he starts and I stop. Mm. When I got hired, I thought I was saying certain words or phrases or sentences. What it was is they had me almost record verbatim certain phrases and sentences that he says, but they just needed small syllables or a word here or a sentence here. And it's amazing on what they're able to do to make all the dialogue flow. You would never, your ears never pick up on it. And so that's what I noticed that there's another superpower many of us are able to bolster without even trying. Regardless of where your voice print is, you automatically naturally sound like someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, many of us have been told, hey, you sound just like my auntie or you sound like this actor, mm -hmm. or this actress or this person I grew up listening to or watching. This guy on the radio sounds just like you. Um, you, could, you could definitely have a lucrative career in voice matching. Looping basically is a team of professionals that brings life to a project. So you watch Game of Thrones and you see Joffrey yelling at people, blah, 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 blah. All the actors in the background are staying 100% quiet because the microphones are only picking up the main actors. They edit the show. Then they go back and post and use a loop team. These are actors who can float in and out of different genres, styles, vocal range, you name it, tone, register. And we bring these scenes to life. And even though there may be 400 people around or they're supposed to be, there's only 10 of us, sometimes 15. And we will just keep on recording, 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 pardon me, as we sound as different characters, different humans to flesh that world out. And you will never know the difference. The best example of this is watching Friends. Go back and watch Friends. Every time everyone is on that couch in that coffee shop and they're talking, all those extras, even Seinfeld is a very good example. They're super quiet. When Seinfeld's on the street talking to George and um, Elaine or Kramer and they're on the street and you hear all the New Yorkness and you hear people in the background, none of that is there. That's all loopers doing that later on. It's all sound design. Now, why? Here, ah, oh, that's just doing background voices. That's not that important. Well, think about it. Every video game, every audio book. Every television show, every movie, every you name it needs to sound like it really happened. So it's just extremely lucrative. If you turn your nose up at ADR and looping, that's fine. You can make six and seven figures from looping alone, from doing ADR and looping alone. You can because, make a substantial amount. Because you get paid residuals as if you were in the show, right? Correct. Is that and even if you were to do it non-union, it's so lucrative. You're working all the time because there's projects now. There's no more hiatus. So they're just rapid fire. They're just going all the time. They're shooting Monday. You work on a project on Monday for episode five. And by Thursday, they have episode six ready to go. And so mm -hmm. this happens multiple times throughout the day multiple times throughout the week. So it is extremely lucrative and there's room for everybody. And it's also a really specific skill set and a really Just about to say intense that. And, and really intense uh, because it is such a skill set and it is so important in terms of the production. And there's a lot at stake and things have to happen super quickly. Mm. You, uh, It's also one of the, I think, more elusive realms of of voiceover i know yes. i know it's like it's uh, sort of like yes people will tell you there is looping and right. then they'll talk <laughs> yes <laughs> there they is. Quiet. it is literally right. like becoming mm -hmm. one of the ninjas that gets dispatched on missions you know what happens but no one ever talks about it you don't talk about where you're going mm -hmm. you just come back with a head and drop it off and then you bow and then take off. And hold on. <laughs> so the reason for that is, is because it's, it's the exact, it's the exact comparison of meeting someone who says they are an agent. It doesn't matter if they are at the laundromat, if they are at Trader Joe's or supermarket, or if they are at the gas station, everyone wants something from an agent. They have a cousin who wants to be an actor or someone is looking for an, an, you know, uh, an agent or a manager or whatnot. And it's the exact same thing. Every time a person mentions that they do loop or they do ADR or they're in that world, 
a hundred percent of the time, someone, if not everyone around will say, Hey, I want to get involved in that. How does that happen? So because of that stigma, it's led to a very big kind of push of don't say anything. It's not because the community feels that there'll be work taken away, but it's more along the lines of saying the same thing over and over and over again, and then everyone wanting to jump the line. You have to be completely a hundred percent okay with not knowing what's going to come out of your mouth. I'll say that again. You have to have improv muscles so strong that you don't know what you're going to say when you hear that imaginary fourth beat, but you know it fits the world. And that's totally fine. To get there, many of us need improv training. Improv is the basis, right? That's it's like the basis of what we need. So ADR and looping, the number one muscle that you will always flex will be improv. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've spoken for a minute. So let's jump into some of these questions. Yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm. uh, I will call on a name. And if you'd like to unmute yourself and come into the room uh, and we will start with Billy Bryant. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Thanks so much. Yeah. So I was just wondering, where do we look for looping and ADR specific work? I know that casting directors often have like a group of folks that they really trust. How do you become part of that group got you okay uh this is a google question google adr looping groups hyphen your city also start with colleges because uh many of the students there even though they don't pay they will they always are working on in colleges within your area they're always working on films that need adr and looping they usually never think about it and they wind up calling their classmates or their companions or colleagues to jump in and usually their project takes a hit because they're not Uh, malleable in that world. Usually they're very tech heavy or director focused or actor focused, but they don't know the genre. So you definitely want to Google that. Also, what's up, Billy? Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think also, um, I think, I, I think also being part of the community in general of like, as you are part of the voiceover community in general, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll know how, you'll know like, oh, so-and-so is doing, doing, uh, <clears throat> doing looping. So you, it, it, like Jason was saying, you want to be cool. You want to be cool about it. You don't just go like, hey, <laughs> he gave me a job looping, but you know, hang around, ask a question, get to know things, get, you know, um, meet the people who are doing the things, hang around, and uh, um, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think, I think that's you know part of part of the thing. Um, as, taking as, classes from them, uh, seeing if yeah. they offer classes or private training. A lot of times, it's hey, just wanted to. Every actors, performers love having their ego stroked. So anytime you ask someone, hey, do you have a um private I can take from you how much do you charge for a private many Mm -hmm. of them don't have those but they'll go oh you want to learn from me well (laughs) yes it is this price or you know I usually say like oh what are your privates like 50 bucks (laughs) as subconsciously throwing it in their mind of like don't charge me more than that you know charge me less or about 50 and then usually they'll say oh yeah yeah we can set up a time and then I stay on them cool let's set up some time this week or next week and just so that they can throw you in the in the community, Billy, because they'll nine times out of 10, you'll be better than they anticipate. And then they'll say, you know, I could use you. You have a good voice profile. Um, yeah, I'm working on something now that you would be perfect for. Or yeah, how are you doing? Can you get low and do younger kids, high school, college? Okay, awesome. You know, stuff like that. Or can you do older folk? Can you? And so once they start, once you pique their interest, And you come from a way of, hey, how can I learn versus give me something? How can I offer you something instead of taking or asking? You're almost always in there. Yeah, a little, little, uh, the the idea of of, um, finding out if you can shadow something. Mm. Uh, My 20 year old son has been rocking the event lighting world. He had a dream and, and living the first rule of the dojo. First rule of the dojo is know what you want, ask for it. People will give it to you if you allow. So Carter uh, had a vision a couple of years ago. He said, "I really, I really want to work in event light, you know, in in events uh, for esports." And um, so he's had that in his mind. He has mad skills in in that area from the tech tech work that he did in high school. Um, he went to um, he went to uh, 
an esports event as a spectator. He had the chutzpah, and he also, you know, has some some cool things that he's happened because he's met pe the people who are doing the things. Um, he had the chutzpah to introduce himself to the tech director and say, "Hey, and uh, nice to meet you." He followed up with a nice thank you and said, "If there's ever an opportunity to shadow, I would love to." Mm -hmm. And um, two weeks later, he spent the whole day on that set and met everybody. And then he said, thank you. And if there's ever a chance to work with you guys, this is what I want to be doing. And he's uh, he's on board on Riot Games now, and he's going to be learning. So, you know, I, I, I think that really just that mm -hmm. distinction of how can I watch and how can I learn? How can I help mm -hmm. um, is really a good a good thing. So I love that. The attitude of I am going to do it regardless whether you help me or not, I feel it's only it's exponential it's only helped me so much i've seen other colleagues it's helped them the attitude of hey can you you have a moment uh let me ask you some questions or how can i do this or help me out because i'm going to do it whether you offer the information or not the fact that mm -hmm. a person feels you don't need them they want to give you something and it, it's been so beneficial tell carter as a side note uh to also focus on dj lighting um i dj and have a lot of friends who dj as well he can make four or five grand and not even be there, just programming the lights of the show. Oh my God, you're so having lunch with Carter. Awesome. It, 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 it set, <laughs> yeah. ask the, DJ, the music he's going to play and then build out the images and the lights. He shows up two hours, three hours before the show, programs everything, make sure it runs in Ableton. Peace. He makes three, four, five, six grand without even having to be there. All so right. tell to, it's very it. lucrative. Yeah. <laughs> Forget very lucrative. Ever, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> very good passive income. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Awesome. Okay. So a little off track, and yet so on track. Like the that was really the essence of the of the of the that's the heart of the question, right? Mm -hmm. that, yeah. So what's the next question? Well, oh, time's up. Sorry. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, our, our next question comes uh, from Stephen. I think it's on the same track, but uh, yeah, Stephen, if you'd like to meet yourself and come into the room uh, and pose your question. Where's Stephen? Hi. Um, well, my question was a little tongue in cheek. It was, how do I get into your Walla Walla group? Mm -hmm. But um, how successful uh, have you met people successful in starting their own group? Um, getting the people together for other professionals uh, of the same level and then beginning to market yourself? Yes, it's very lucrative. Uh, everyone is starting their own group. Um, so I don't run one. I do hire and cast and I do direct for ADR and looping when I'm asked to, but I'm working so much for other groups that I tend. Uh, I want you to think, Stephen, first of all, it's nice to meet you. Do you remember the 70s, the old Chop Suey films, the uh, different Kung Fu schools? We studied the school of Northern Shaolin. We studied the school of Southern Shaolin. That's exactly how looping is. <laughs> each group is like a straight up uh, Kung Fu school and each one thinks they're the best. So there's sometimes there's a lot of crossover for us performers. We work with multiple groups, but the coordinators, although they do share information and they'll help one another cast, they are they're completely opposed to one another because they're always bidding for the same job. Uh, if Marvel makes a new Iron Man movie, that might go, you know, the coordinators get a whiff of it and five coordinators could bid on that movie. Hey, we can do it for this rate. We can do it for this rate. We can do it for this rate. Um, to answer your question and make it bring it back, coordinators, performers themselves have started their own groups. It's extremely lucrative. There's more work now than there is, uh, than there are the performers to do it. There's so much more work. So what's the best way to introduce yourself to the casting people? They're easily identified, but uh, yes. how would you introduce yourself? Um, going back to, as we answered Billy's question, again, take a class, ask for a private lesson, um, try to jump out. No, I'm sorry, I, that's not what I meant. How would you introduce yourself to the casting people as a new group, as a new looping group? So uh, let me just clarify. You're saying from the you're you're running your own group you're a coordinator oh, of your i started group, group. Right. got you okay got you i see what you're saying so you're talking about more of producers and directors got mm -hmm. it uh in that world let's see it would just be very vanilla it would be sending an email giving them a call calling their assistant if they have one and saying hey we're a loop group we've worked on this here's our website love to show you what we can do we can come in 
at, you know, give you a 10% discount or whatever, something like that along the lines, because they are always going to jump around. I've worked for, so at Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers works with everyone. So does Paramount, so does Sony. So it doesn't matter. Uh, for instance, we're working on a show now that is for FX and then that is for uh, Paramount, but yet we're shooting and recording it at Warner Brothers. Uh, worked on seasons one and two with one coordinator. And now we're working on season three and there's an entirely different coordinator, entirely different group. However, a lot of the members that I'm working with were on seasons one and two with me, even though we worked under a different coordinator and different loop group. So the directors, the producers, they always change and they jump around and they all have different preferences. This person likes this coordinator because they're Kevin Faye's good friend or they know J.J. Abrams or this person beefs with J.J. Abrams and therefore doesn't want to hire that coordinator. It can be as petty as that um, or as professional as you want to get. So that's probably the easiest way. I would say have a website, block and build out everything, call up the assistant, send out an email and just keep on bombing away. Keep flying over and dropping that email, just like you know, <laughs> kind of make it ripple through so you can kind of permeate and eventually they will go out because one thing people I want to pull the veil off of is that when you're working all the time, you're working all the time. So there's many times the coordinators cannot, there's multiple times there's just a lull where no coordinator can accept the job and so it has to go to a loop group well we can take your job we can we can record your project but it's not until three weeks out because you know we don't want to tell the client this but we're working on this we're working on this we're working on this we're trying to keep apple happy we're trying to keep sony happy and paramount happy we just we don't have any room for you which is what you wouldn't say but that's the honest truth so someone like you and your group can slide right in there cool Thank you, Jason. Of course. Thank you. I like that shirt and hat, man. <laughs> Very cool. Hey. Well, what are the questions, guys? And it can, right. you can ask questions about other things than looping and, and ADR and stuff. If you have other things that are on your mind or in your heart. Giving a um, shout out to Raleigh, North Carolina, Vegas in the house. I see people from all over. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a good assortment. Um, next up, we have, I hope I say this right, Barry. Barry Bjorn? Correct. Yay. Hey, Barry, how's it going? Great. Uh, how's it going with you? I'm learning so much, and I, I mean, can't wait to get started with this. Um, I was just wondering, <clears throat> excuse me, where is most of this work done? Is it New York, L.A.? Um, are there any other major cities where they do this? I, I live in D.C. Oh, awesome. Yes. So all around. Uh, I have a colleague who is from L.A., mm -hmm has a wife who is Spanish and they have two kids. They have moved to Spain and now I still work with him. He loops from Spain. So you can be, wow. since the pandemic popped off, as long mm -hmm. as you have a strong connection and a good studio and you know how to work all your gear, you can literally be from anywhere. Once you, put, once you put into the door, you can literally there it is. work on either polar opposites or, uh, and what I mean by coast is, you know, uh, California or New York or in between, even in the Midwest, it doesn't, it's exponential now because we're recording so much that as long as your internet connection is strong and you have a decent space and you know how to run your gear, mm -hmm. connect is very liable. Clean feed is what a lot of us use. It's what most of the studios use. They use clean feed. Clean feed is, okay. It's like, um, What's the comparison I made? Clean feed is like Zoom, but only audio. That's it. It's okay. only audio. It's what was what did we used to have back in the day, back in the 80s. It was like Pac Bell. Pac Bell did it was, you know, back when we had the original old phones that you had to, <laughs> the rotary. Um, the connection was super strong, but it only did one thing. Call. Even call waiting didn't work sometime. I think someone's mic is open. Someone's or someone's smoothie is ready. Yeah, please make me a uh, save some. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, and, the, yeah. and then the key, the key there, Jason, is that your colleague was part of a, an, an established entity and a known quantity of, of being a quality and reliable um, loop group member. And now he lives in Spain, knows what the deal is. Everybody knows that he's part of the team. Got it. Right. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once you start looping. Um, so it. It's literally like joining the NBA or getting drafted by the NFL. It can take 
what feels like forever. But all you need is to be called off the bench one time. If you're called off the bench and you're ready, your improv is strong, you don't talk too much, you don't make a lot of jokes, you aren't overly excited. As long as you do your job, they will call you back again and again and again. I try to train all my fellow colleagues. You're never trying to go and get called in for the job that you got hired for. You got that one. You're trying to build a career. You're trying to get called back. So the first three hours are vital, right? Stay off your phone. Make sure you're listening and make sure you're watching the scenes and you're reading the cue so you know what's coming up. Oh, the blonde in the back on the left, that's Q3. I saw her. I can do it. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, go ahead, Barry. Jump up and after the three beeps, go ahead and catch that blonde. Next cue, black dude on the right. Yep, Jason's here. I saw it. I can grab him if you want. Yeah, go ahead and take it. And all this is teaching the coordinators. I'm here. I'm paying. I'm cognizant. I'm paying attention. I'm ready to work. Let's get this done so we can go home. And and Jay, can you also say like how serious, like like what the things that will get you not called back instantly as well? Because I think I think that that because this is something like you don't know what it is, or you don't know that you've been called by the NBA, you might be like, oh yeah, hold on, anything. But but can you talk about uh for a second like how how of the like how important it is to be on your game in yes. this? So being a looper or doing ADR makes you a miniature historian because you have to learn about the different genres. You have to learn about the time period that your um, project, the project you're working on is in. If it pertains to a certain type of, uh, I say genre again, or uh, what the project is scaling around. Um, for instance, uh, For All Mankind, an Apple show takes place and if in today's time, in the future, like the world 22, 23 something, but all of the aesthetic is from 1960s. So they have robots that walk around and that serve you, but they look like they're coming from the Fallout universe, that video game from the 60s. It's very bizarre. So you would have to do research on the 60s, but then also have to do research as far as in the far, far future, right? Like aliens or something like that with Sigourney Weaver and Bill Paxton, Ridley Scott. So it's, it's a, an amalgamation of things. You become miniature historians. And so you bank all of this info. Um, believe it or not, the number one reason people do not get called back is for showing up late all the time. You guys will not believe it. I thought it was just an LA thing, being born and raised here. We're very lackadaisical. Sun is always out. We kind of just, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, right? It's everywhere. People will show up five minutes after they'll show up 15 minutes late they'll show up if we're physically on the stage they'll show up 25 minutes oh i didn't equate we needed to park across the street i had to find the email then i went through security and they made me stop and no one cares no one cares right no one cares they just want you to be on time and that's the number one reason the second main reason is not being prepared not knowing where your cues are not knowing that we're doing radio dispatch or police dispatch right sounding like cops not knowing the um the justification of the police officers. Wait, so we're doing cops in New York. They have different call signs than cops in LA. What's the call sign? Ah, dude, you should have done all that. You could have done this research on the way over. You could have researched a YouTube video while sitting in the car at a red light to get the info. These are Those are the main two reasons people do not get called back. The third I would say is being on your phone and being overly friendly. Those work in tandem. Being so excited to be there and, and always on your phone. If you're on your phone 24 seven, at least let people know your information is there. Hey, just so you know, I saved all my notes on my phone. I'll be reading off of it. Ah, now no one, everyone totally gets it. And they're not thinking that you're trying to drum up your next job or that you're telling your agent you'll get it in and the next break or whatever it is. Um, being malleable helps because each director and sound producer are completely different. You'll go on a project and they want to catch every single extra in the background and you're there forever, which should take, you know, three hours. We should be done. You'll be there for nine hours. And then sometimes you go on these gigantic, huge multi-million dollar budgets and the director goes, eh, that take is fine. I'll cut it out later. Let's go to the next take. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we got this school of high school kids. Uh, yeah, you guys just do your thing. And it, it, you never know what you're going to get. So being able to float and weave and not get married to one specific um, style of acting will help you exponentially. So be on time, be prepared, 
stay off of your phone. I like to bring an <laughs> iPad with me. It just subconsciously sends a message that you're working versus trying to just talk about why the dog threw up. You know, people just don't, humans, we, we need to categorize things very, very fast. This person's paying attention. That person's on their phone. They're not, I'm not hiring them back. That person's paying attention. Like we go through this stuff so fast. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Well, let's do some more questions. These yeah. Are... <clears throat> yeah, great questions, everybody. I, everybody came to prepared. Um, Liam, Liam Lane. Uh, hello. Go ahead and come in. Yeah, hello Hi. there. Hi, Jason. Liam, what's happening? Yeah. How's like it going, man? Together before, have we? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna. You, you might remember if I'm gonna talk about an, uh, a specific experience. Um, mm -hmm. So, I got called off the bench once. I booked an ADR job on a movie, um, nice. which was relatively easy. It was a new experience, so I did. You know, it took me by surprise a few times, and then soon after that, I got called into a looping group for um shang chi the yeah. Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. and 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 that was possibly the hardest most stressful day of acting i've ever done in my <laughs> life um lots of yelling right yeah lots of yelling and super quick um action kung fu scenes um with you know hundreds of characters in um <clears throat> And I, I honestly felt way over my head and I got through the day, but I was like, oh my God, that was, mm -hmm. you know, like beep, beep, beep. And then you're in and we were all in separate booths because um, it was during COVID. Um, but yeah, like it, was, it, was, it was intimidating because all these guys knew each other and they were amazing at it. And I was, you know, kind of thrown in the deep end. So the, the question is, um, having had that experience, but not, not being credited, actually. I didn't realize that you don't get a credit on, like, in the final end credits of the movie. How how would you go about promoting yourself and marketing yourself with, with a couple of jobs under your belt to, you know, new casting directors or... Awesome. Groups? I love that. Um, I try to say, I try to equate our emails as being pings, P-I-N-Gs, on a radar. So, boom you get picked up right you always want to be a ping on a radar whenever you're sending out an email try to make it of bullet points hey jeff just letting you know i'm still doing adr i've done you know here here are the projects you can hear me on quick bullet points why because people are nine times out of ten reading emails on this right they're reading emails on their phone so a bullet point is very quick and they can scale and see the bullet points, see exactly what it is that you want. And then later on, once they, you pique their interest, they can jump back up and then read the sentence of, wait, who is Liam? What does he want? Oh, cool. Oh, I need someone like him. Awesome. Right. So the bullet points just help get the information out um, in layman terms really, really quick. Second of all, you can credit yourself. Sometimes projects don't give you a credit, but you yourself can go on to IMDb and pop that credit in there contact uh, whoever the intern was or the person who put the credits on or the, even the producer sometimes or the director through IMDb and they'll give you the credit. And if they don't, you, you've still done that job. Oh, you're over here now. There we go. You Brady bunched on me. You're like, <laughs> you're over there. where'd he go? Um, and your voice is so unique to us Yankees, right? To us Americans <laughs> that I would think the moment you speak, someone would say, oh, I could probably use this guy. You know, uh, can you do an American accent? Can you do this type of accent? Can you, do, you've already got them thinking. Um, but even one job, couple of jobs, you already have. So already, I'm not saying you're doing this, but if you are, I would say, look at it differently that you all, you got called in for some reason. You got called in because of your skill, regardless of who's been doing it for a while or whatever. You got called in and I'm sure you kicked butt that day. All you need is mileage. That's it. You just need to be able to do it more and more. But since you have, um, you know, a superpower under your belt already, Shang-Chi, that was an amazing movie. That's a Marvel movie. It's a Disney movie. You name it, superhero movie, like the main three, right? Hot right now. Definitely you want to market yourself and let people know, hey, coordinator, I don't need anything from you. I'm just making you aware. I am looping and working on projects like Shang-Chi, like this, like this, like this. I've been doing blah, blah, blah. Here are the bullet points. That subject line, make that subject line pop off, you guys. Do not put in voiceover actor look. Nope. Bing. 
mm-hmm. actor in Shang Chi, you know, looking for uh, trying to be um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, of off of offerage to you or offerage? Mm-hmm. It's not a word. yeah trying to assist you in some type of way you just make the subject line provocative Mm -hmm. literally small just like we learned in third grade keep a paragraph short two three sentences sentence one should have everything about you hi my name is hi Susie, sally karen whoever my name is liam lane da 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 i do this i do this sentence one tells me everything about liam Sentence two, why you're contacting me. Sentence three, look down below. Bullet points. Da, 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 Another small paragraph. Da, 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 da. Subject line with all your links and everything. That way a person is going through their phone and they can just see everything. They can pin it and come back to it. It might take seven to eight touches to let a person know what's going on. But mm-hmm. coordinators always need new blood. Always. Because people like us who are working all the time for them are booked out. I can't work on Monday if I'm already hired on Monday. Liam can, he's available. So it, 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 for some reason, keep sending out those emails and the planets will always align sooner than you think nowadays because we're rapid firing. Tell mm-hmm. everyone you know, tell your agents, your management team, if you have them, uh, put it up on any of the pay to plays if you're on there, voices.com, voice123, that you do ADR and looping. You can get hired on there for those jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, let everyone know, let your on-camera team know if you have one, your theater team, if you're getting into mocap, Everything you're, you know, uh, I wanted to say Lamas, but your Laban class or movement, your Alexander <laughs> technique. I don't know. You could be pregnant. Who is 2022? So I'm not right. It's teach his own. Uh, but let everyone know, and you'll be surprised on who already has things running that they can just put you in contact with someone. And then once again, what Jay said, you have worked on your credits are on the highest caliber of thing that you can do in this realm. So if you were in that room, someone got you there, you held your own, you, you're still alive to tell about it. Um, you th- That's already like, oh, let, let me get this person I don't know anything about, someone who's worked in the highest level and can handle that. Oh, okay, great. And Amazing. you can name drop the person you worked with, right? The coordinator, whoever that was. Hey, it worked on this person. I always like saying the directors, right? Because you don't need a strong um, friendship comparison with them. You just need a professional setting, which you have that. Hey, I was able to work alongside with the team and blankety blank or whatever, because they heard everything that you did. When a person sees names that they're familiar with, that solidifies you as being legitimate. And so... It just takes one coordinator. We only need one, guys. Sometimes it can take a while to get that one, but that one will lead to three, that three will lead to eight, that eight will lead to 20. And before you know it, a year is gone and you're working all the time in looping. It just takes a while. It doesn't really matter of your location anymore, your demographic, your age, your shape, your size, your height. As long as you have, as long as you know this well and you can work, as long as you know your gear well, there's a buzzing going on and you know you need to switch out a cable and you know how to do that quickly, You, your money. You just have to let people be aware who are looking for actors like us that you're also doing the work that they need. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, Thank you. 15 more minutes. So let's let's see how, if we can get yeah. some more questions. Maybe we can do a little bit uh, like, yes. Rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Next up, we have Ruben O'Neill. Ruben, come on in. Mm-hmm. Jason, first of all, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and actually being here with us. So you rock on that. Thank you so much. Of course. Thanks for having me. And then I have like a two-parter question. Um, the first one would be, is there any voice techniques that you recommend doing daily just to keep your voice up to throttle daily? Oh, uh, hydration. So I know everyone talks about water, 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 water. We're tired of hearing it. However, I'm, I just learned this a few years ago. The only way to get hydrated is 24 hours before. So if you're not drinking 64 ounces or 72 ounces of water every day and you have a big recording session the next day, pounding water the day of recording is not as helpful. You need to be hydrated the day before. That's why if we build really good habits, I have a water bottle that this glows and shines and whatever. So it lets me know I'm either behind or every time I take a sip, it tracks to an app to let me know, hey, you're on track. So stay up on that hydration and everybody vocal health. We could talk about it to your blue in the face. I am someone spice chocolate 
Dairy does not bother me. I can eat three scoops of ice cream and go into a video game session and I'm fine. Everyone's different, right? And we can talk about the vocal straws, using that stuff that I have, the cups. Everyone's different. I would just say, try to make sure you stay hydrated. If you're hydrated and your vocal cords are good, you're straight. You're good to go. Try to get some uh, Ninjum Paper Koa, right? Uh, the lozenges or that stuff. I'll type it into the chat. I'll give it to Jeff as well. Uh, it's What's that low quat syrup. Uh, yeah, honey low quat syrup. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, that that stuff alone, you put it in hot water and just sip on that. It will just revitalize your your vocal cords. And just mm -hmm. normal speaking, just talking, making sure that um, you do speak aloud. Even if you're by yourself, read your scripts out loud like a, like a first grader, just learning to read and just really over articulating and enunciating. Uh, I teach this in voice matching. If you go too far, when you pull it back, you're always like 95% on. If you mm -hmm. want to do a voice match, make a parody of that person. Try to push them super far, then bring them back about 40%. And you're usually right in that pocket. Whereas if you try to just hit it the first time, something you miss, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would definitely say that. And then try to read stuff that you do not like. So if you... Um, Spam is really good. Every time you get a spam email, read it aloud and read it fast. Put your hands in the air. If you guys are old enough to remember the uh, the Flintstones, whenever Fred and Barney would get robbed, <laughs> it would be a dude. Let me see if I can do this. It would be a dude with a mask and they would have their hand in their shirt like this, pretending to be a, a rock shooter, right? And then Fred and Barney would always put their hands up. Oh, well, if you need to leave, if you need to read legal copy or if you want to read something fast without messing up, pretend you're being robbed. Put your hands up like you're being, <laughs> and then just read it super fast. Don't go back if you mess up. Just read it quick. You're trying to teach your brain. Um, Mark Cashman talks about this, and that's Everett Oliver's technique as well. I just want to make sure I mention both of them uh, to get your eye, brain, mouth speed to keep those three things in tandem. Constantly read stuff. Use those spam emails before you delete them and unsubscribe. Read mm -hmm. them. Make them work. Make them worth something. Cool, cool, cool. And you had one other quick question, Ruben? Yes, I'm so sorry. I have one more question. Sure. I wanted to know, um, so right now I just got my first anime role and I wanted to know um, how would you market yourself to keep yourself as relevant as possible as with to get your demo out there more to more faces? Ah, nice. Uh, everybody should be utilizing social media. I know Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. Here's the thing, guys. It's not for them. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok is not for family members and it is not for friends. It is for people who can hire us. So you want to put some of, once that anime drops, you do that exact same take, Ruben, in your booth and put it up on TikTok. Keep it less than 15 seconds. Short, shorter the better. Do a bunch of different anime voices, right? And just push that out there. What we're doing is I call rebuttal fire. Some intern is bored and they're looking for voiceover actors that they need. So they don't want to go to voices.com. They don't know where to go. Voice bank is gone. So they go to Instagram and TikTok. They find Ruben O'Neill and they go, okay, cool. What's this guy's track record? Okay, I've gone five months, six months, a year. This guy's always in the booth. He's always working on stuff. Now I have rebuttal fire. So when my higher up asks me, when Let's just call him John Smith says, okay, let's say Sally Smith. Get the ladies in there. Mm -hmm. So let's say Sally Smith comes in and says, how do we know this Ruben O'Neill dude is any good? Their rebuttal fire is, check this out, Sally. He has a track record, which I found on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. This dude is constantly working and doing all this stuff. Who cares about what mom says? Who cares about what your uncle or an ex-girlfriend, boyfriend person says about, oh, are you always posting stuff in the booth? It's not for them. It's for the people who can hire us. And everybody wants that prom date who they think everyone's going to ask. If people think you're not going to have a date for prom, you won't be asked to prom. Everybody <laughs> wants to work with the person who's already working. So utilize TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Make sure that you're always posting. It can be as simple as a picture of you in the booth. It could be you slating your name and messing up and going, oh, that doesn't sound right, and doing it again. Keep them short. Eight seconds is all you need. You just need a Rolodex of stuff. When people are scrolling on their phone, they see, wow, she's working all the time. She's always in the booth, right? 
Taco Bell has an Instagram page. Why? Because it's free and it's free marketing. People who are 25 and under, 22 and under, will see Taco Bell is giving away free tacos this random Thursday and they'll show up. So utilize, utilize, utilize. Then once you have that Rolodex, I'd say at least 90 days, that's when you hit up Funimation, a cup of tea, bang, zoom. You start hitting all the anime houses, mm -hmm. letting them know, I don't need anything from you guys. I'm yeah. already working. You're hiring people like me. I just want to let you know I'm available. Don't need anything from you guys. I'm just, I'm here. You don't need me? Cool. Hit me up when you need me, right? You'll get so much more by not asking for anything, just making them aware. The thing that came to my mind, Jay, is you, and when you said that is um, you're basically hydrating, you're hydrating your social media. Ah, right? you, yeah. let that, uh, you keep like that. that always hydrated and then, ooh, we need a drink. That, that's cool. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Always we got time for a couple more, couple more questions. And we'll wrap up. And thank you um, so much again. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for being here. Yeah. So, uh, what's 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 are there any last rapid fire questions that we can answer? Yeah, um, Dave, Dave G. This is a pretty rapid fire question. Where if you're you, still Dave? in the room, if not, I can always pose it for you. Give you another second here. Dave, yeah, G I'm here. G G G ah, perfect. There we go. There he is. Hey, I'm, uh, you touched earlier on the uh, on the tech in your audio chain. Uh, can you talk more about that? I know some early in the in the pandemic, uh, some houses were sending out like packages of tech to keep everything the same. Mm -hmm. uh, how's it changed now? And talk more about the uh, the audio chain that's acceptable. And by the way, great job. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, nice to meet you, Dave. Um, Dave G. So uh, I just dropped the kit off yesterday. Warner Brothers made 40 kits. They have these tablets that are Windows based, but they have um, uh, their actual engineer made these. He made 40 gigantic kits in these giant Pelican cases. And you show up there to the Warner Bro Brothers lot and uh, they're for looping an ADR. You open it up and it has uh, an M a Sennheiser MKH50 already attached. It has a tablet that is Windows based, but has Apple installed in it. Um, and you just plug it into the Ethernet, give it power. There's also an RME baby interface inside I'm telling you guys this stuff for a reason. Once you plug all that up, you do nothing. You turn it on and the engineers at Warner Brothers run everything. You just need mm -hmm. to be in a quiet space. They give you earphones that go along with it, a 50-foot uh, Ethernet cord, as well as a stand that you put that case on. When you're done, you package everything back and drop it back off at Warner Brothers. Uh, some studios are still sending out kits and they that slowed down a lot because what they've noticed is that most of us have great sounding capabilities. What you want is you want to know no matter what mic you have, you want to be able to know the, the proximity and the technique of that. I have the Townsend Sphere L22 hooked up right now. This is a super sensitive mic. If I get too close, I'm going to blow you guys out. But I know how to drop the gain down, and I know exactly on what access to talk on it to where it sounds fine. Um, Are they still sending have, out the kits, or is that less now? They're still sending out the kits, but that's less because they've – stumbled onto one is time consuming and two that most of us already have a decent sounding studio. Right. Um, even the latest iPhone has very dynamic mics. I'm not saying, you know, go on along with that, but you'll be surprised. Whatever you have, use that to jump up. So the mm -hmm. second you, if you have a focus, right, work that focus, right. If you put in, if you have a TLM, uh, TLM 103, remember that's like having a Ferrari and driving on rush hour traffic on the 405 here in LA, you, you're <laughs> throttling that sound. That means that that mic is so good that you need a better interface to really hear the sound of that microphone. Is know your microphone. acceptable for the ADR and the looping? Is that more of a standard or is it uh, condensers? Uh, it Whatever you have in today's time, whatever you have, the 416 is tried and true for ADR and looping, but many times you show up and they have a UA, uh, they have a Neumann U87 AI there. And it all depends on the studio. Um, I got this mic. This is $1,500. It comes with 60 different microphones in it. It records from the front and the back and mixes before it hits the audio interface to sound like whatever mic you want it to sound like. So right now I have the 416 loaded, but I can upload the AKG C14 XL2. I could upload the Neumann 87, the TLM, whatever. I bought this so that I don't have to physically switch the mics out. That I can just click, click in the software, and now it sounds like uh, 
uh, Shure SMB7, you know? So it's, it, it, we, we've gotten to that point to where 500 hmm. bucks should be able to get you a strong sounding microphone. A grand two 500 should be able to get you a very good interface and both of those work in tandem. Mm-hmm. I'm running the uh, Townsend Sphere L22 into the Apollo Twin X into a Mac mini, which I'm going to jump up to the Mac studio before December. And this is good enough. This is more than the studios need right. inside a studio right. bricks, one voice uh, mm-hmm. studio. One and also just in case that all that uh, everything that Jason just said made your brain go. Um, when you're just beginning, you don't need that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You need a mic that may be under under definitely under 500, but you need you don't need all of that. This is what Jason has built into Two. what the work he's doing, um, and you know what the end. So so you don't need all of. You don't need that. Start where you are and build to that. This is and my fourth and final booth. It took me a while. <laughs> final booth is really buried in this booth. <laughs> Seriously. Jason, I'm thanks gonna... for sharing your expertise. That was really sweet of you to share your expertise. Great job. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. I have an audition uh, with Vox yeah. at 11 with a client. Yeah, so so um, I'm going to skid down. Guys, this is awesome. Uh, Jason, how do we keep in touch with you? Sure. Uh, everyone, you can go to Dropship Studios LA dot com and go to there's a tab that says performer submissions you can submit all your stuff there um that's the company i own we constantly we're constantly working on adr and looping projects for video games movies television shows we're hiring people for uh performers for mocap um send your voiceover reels because you, you don't have to be within la for us to hire you to work on a game we're working on a project uh meeting i had just before this at from nine to ten uh, where the they're going to need voiceover for a few things. And I love finding new people. So submit all your stuff through there. Go to the performers tab. Go to dropshipstudiosla.com. You'll see on the workouts page, there'll be later on today, there'll be an ADR and looping workout that you guys can do from the comfort of your home on Zoom that we'll get up later on, later on today. Yeah. Well, Jason, thank you so much for being here. Um, and everyone, thank you for, for being here. Um, Dojo is here for you. We do this the first Wednesday of every month, 10 a.m. PT. Uh, ask the sensei. You can put it on your calendar. The third week of every month, we do something that we call Get to Know VO. And we focus on a different aspect of voiceover or something that you need to know. Um, we have, if you're just starting out or if you uh, want to complement and supplement what you already have, and take where you are and go all the way. Um, or you should do voiceover intensive. The last one of the year is starting up on Monday. I think we have a few seats left, Jeffrey. Is that still? Uh, yes, still? Uh, just a few though. And they are filling up really right, rapidly. Yeah. Thank you for having Bye, me. Fish, Jeff, ya. everybody. Angelina, I see you. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye, um, Jason. So yeah, uh, really encourage you to, uh, it's, a, it's a great place to start. If you are working pro, um, we have our VO Dojo Pro Fight Clubs three times a month, uh, demo rep and booking to uh, participate. Everyone can be a spectator. Amazing way to, uh, to watch and learn what the, basically it's, it turns the audition process transparent. Um, if you have other questions, um, if you would like to talk about where you are and where you'd like to be, you can get on our calendar for a, what we call a voiceover once over, basically who, where are you at? Where do you want to be? How can we help you? Um, would love to talk with everybody here, um, and, uh, get, get to know y'all. It's great to see everyone who's coming back. Great to see everyone who's been a member. Um, and uh, look forward to uh, being here to help you in any way that you can, that we can to move you forward and deeper and truer in your voiceover land. Um, anything else that I missed, Jeffrey? Uh, no. Uh, so there's a link in the chat to uh, go to the uh, voiceover page to look at the course. Um, I'll also drop a chat so that you can get on our calendar. Um, if you have more nuanced questions or if you're at a working pro level and, uh, want to get in touch with us or just have questions for us in general. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and you can always email us at info at the Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, excellent. Sarah. Well, <laughs> it's like, hey, it's hey, friends. Um, yeah. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think I think we should wrap up. But um, thank you all for being here. Come back next month. Jeffrey, thank you for keeping everything going and rolling. And uh, look forward to having some one-on-one -on -one time um, with each of you on VoiceOver Once Over. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.